Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to the next tutorial in the Flyby-Wire A380. Today we are going to do the FMS preparation, so let's get right into it. The FMS preparation is done completely down here and before we get into the actual preparation itself, just a couple of words on how you can enter data in here. So. You can either enter data through the keypad that you have down here, or you can use your physical keyboard that you have in front of you. Alternatively, we also have a keyboard available in the captain's or the first officer's tray table as well. So this one is also available for our use. Now you can fold it open like this and then there is a second step that you can fold open like this and then you've got a keyboard available up here as well. Be sure to turn the keyboard switch on down here if you want to make use. Now let's go ahead and stow that one again. I will be using my physical keyboard over here while I'm explaining to you every entry that we are going to make. Now let's get right into it. So our FMS is located down here on the multifunction display. In order to make everything a little bit easier during entry, I am going to use the external Navigraph app so that we can have our flight plan visible and our charts ready at hand. Alright, then let's get right into it. The initialization is quite easy. We start by checking the general aircraft status, which is where the aircraft loads up on. We can see we're in an A380-800 and we have the trend engines installed and we have an active navigation database available down here. From there, we're going to start with our setup. So let's click on the active button on the top over here and go to the init page. Now this basically guides us through the entire setup we need to do. So we are going to start by uplinking our flight plan and we are going to hit the company flight plan request button in order to uplink the flight plan. Depending on how long the route is, this can take a little while, so if it looks like nothing happens for a minute or so, don't be surprised, it is still loading in the background. Now, once the flight plan is received, you can see that over here we have received company flight plan. We can click on this and then we can click the insert button. And this uplinks our flight plan. So we're the Asiana 112 from Seoul to Osaka and our alternate is uplinked over here as well. Now. Next up, we check that our cruising flight level is accurate, which we can see it is. We check the cruising temperature, minus 56 degrees, and we can update that one as needed. So for example, we can see over here at our top of climb, we've got a temperature of minus 48. So we can go ahead and change that. Now, how do we change a field? We click on it, and when it is marked, you can simply write with your keyboard into it. So minus 48 and then hit the enter button on your keyboard in order to make the input. Cost index 30, which checks against our flight plan, and the tropopause is automatically uplinked over here as well, which is fine. The trip wind is the average wind component and we should absolutely enter this. In case of this flight plan layout, which is the Lufthansa layout, you can find it on the top right. And over here you can see that the average wind component is plus 53. P denotes a tailwind, so in the trip wind field down here we are going to enter T as a tailwind and then 53 and hit enter. And with that we can see we now have tail 53. Alright, that is the general entries on the flight plan initialization page. From here we've got these five pages down here which guide us through the FMS setup. So we're going to start on the IRS page where we make sure that all three IRSs are in NAV. Once that is done we are going to hit the return button at the lower right, which brings us back to the initialization page. And from here we can continue over the departure page. Make sure that we select the correct runway. In our case, we're going to depart of runway 3, 4 right today. And then we can select our standard instrument departure, which as you can see in the flight plan is the Agoba 2 Yankee departure. So we are going to select Agoba 2 Yankee up here. Verify that the selected values agree with the values that you actually want, most importantly the runway and the SID. And when that is verified, we go down to temporary flight plan. And then we can click on our destination airport down here. 
and again over here we are going to select our arrival. So today we are arriving via the Alicia Bravo star as you can see and the selected runway for us is going to be runway 34 or sorry runway 06 landing northeast bound so we can go for runway we can select landing on runway 06 left we can select the approach which is going to be an ILS and now we just quickly need to have a look at our charts so you can see the Alicia arrivals lead us all the way to the final approach and then we can select our approach itself so for 06 left we either have the ILS Zulu starting in Burton or we have the ILS Yankee starting at Barry. Now if we check our star we can see it leads us all the way to Barry. So for this reason let's select the ILS Yankee approach onto 06 left so that we can match our star with our approach. So with that selected let's go ahead and let's go ahead and um, continue our setup. So we are going to select star and over here we now have the different stars available and over here we have the Alicia Bravo arrival. Finally let's select via none and now our flight plan is selected. So let's hit temporary flight plan and now we can press insert temporary. Finally let's go ahead and scroll through the plan to make sure that everything we have just entered is sensible that there are only those discontinuities which are supposed to be there and when all of that is done we can go ahead and check our standard instrument departure so let's go right back to the very top of the flight plan and have a look at our sit chart so on the sit chart oops here we go on the sit chart we now verify all of those waypoints so Yankee Delta 020 is in here. Then we've got Yankee Delta 040 above 4,000 feet, and we have that in here. Yankee Delta 070 above 7,000 feet, which we have in here. Yankee Delta 100 above 10,000 feet, which we have in here. Then Yankee Kilo 130 above 13,000 feet, which we have in here. Then we continue via 170, 210, and Egoba. And as you can see, that is exactly what we have in our flight plan. Now, at this point, since we are working on the chart already, we can also check if there is any initial climb altitude published. And, well, since there is none published on this one, we can just go ahead and set our FCU to whatever is sensible for the takeoff. So, I'm just going to select something very high today so that we have a lot of time available. So let's go with, for example, altitude 7000. So now that our flight plan is checked, we can go back to the init page down here. So let's hit init. And this leads us back to our standard sequence. So next up is going to be NAV8. And over here, we could manually tune any VOR that we might deem appropriate. For example, you can see that on this sit chart there are no VORs present. However, if we have a look at an approach chart, for example, we are taking off on 3-4 right, so if we just go ahead and select, for example, the ILS approach from a 3-4 right, you can see that there is one sung VOR right at the airport, 112.9, so this one has automatically been tuned but you can also manually tune it by either entering the ident, so in that case we click over here and the ident is Whiskey November Golf, hit enter, and you can see that that has now manually tuned the VOR in question. You can do the same over the frequency, so if you click in here for example 112.9, enter, then it, we have now tuned it via the frequency and so on. So. This way you can manually tune your VORs as needed. Alright, once the tuning is complete we are going to hit the return button and then we can continue. So we are done with enough 8, let's go for the fuel and load. Now the fuel and load is something where the real world procedures are probably going to vary a little bit from what makes sense in flight simulation. 
So in the real world, of course, at this point, we do not have our load sheet yet. So what we do is to enter the weights from our flight plan. So in this case, 350.4 is our zero fuel weight. So 350.4, enter. And since we don't know our center of gravity yet, we are just going to enter 25 as a default value. Last but not least, we enter the block fuel, which today is 24 tons. Going on, we have our fuel figures, which we need to enter. And we can find those down here in the flight plan. So you can see our taxi fuel is 800 kilos. So we're going to insert taxi 0.8. Our alternate fuel is 5,200 kilos. So alternate 5.2, enter. And the final reserves are 4.2. So 4.2, enter. Okay. And this now leads us to a couple of calculations. So down here we've got the minimum fuel at destination 9.4, expected fuel on arrival 14.3, and that means we have an extra fuel of 3,600 kilos. Now, in the real world we would leave the page like that until the load sheet is received. In flight simulation, since we already know what our final load is going to be, we can go ahead and fill this out immediately. So. If we look at the electronic flight back and at the ground page on the payload tab, you can see our zero fuel weight is 350.4 indeed, and the zero fuel weight center of gravity is 34.2, uh, always rounded to the next level. So we can already go ahead and enter 34.2, insert that, block fuel 24 tons, which we can verify down here on the fuel on board. And that way we have already now checked that our um, weights are up to date for the real weight of the aircraft. Now let's go to the last piece of calculations we have to do. So let's hit return and then go to the last box which is take off performance. So on the performance pages we are going to start on the take off panel. Now, on the A380, these pages are called panels, so that's how I will refer to them. Now, remember the SimBrief calculation that we have done in the pre-flight procedure? Well, this is where we are going to need it again. So, first of all, let's cross-check our weight. So, the gross weight for the takeoff is now predicted at 374.3 minus the taxi fuel which is 800 so we're looking at 373.5 so let's go back into simreef and run the calculations with these exact values so 373500 the flap setting is optimum the bleed setting is auto we can hit populate weather over here so that it automatically enters the latest weather conditions and then we can hit calculate so, what do we get now? Flex temperature 66, flaps 1, and our takeoff speeds are located on the side over here. So now let's go ahead and enter all of these into our FMS. So first things first, flaps 1 is selected, packs on is selected, anti-ice off is selected. The takeoff shift should be entered at your discretion. For example, if we want to give ourselves a little lineup allowance, remember how we inserted that shift of 100 meters in SimBrief as well, we can select a takeoff shift up here of 100 meters and hit insert. Next we're going to select our takeoff rating and we are doing a flex takeoff today at 66 degrees. Finally, we can go ahead and enter our speeds which are 142, 145, 150. So that's 142, 145 and 150. Last but not least, we need our trim for the um, stabilizer trim, and we can simply grab this down here from the gross weight CG on the ECAM. So you can see the aircraft has sensed that we've got a CG at 35.2, so we can go ahead and enter 35.2 down here, hit insert, and that's it. Last but not least, let's go down and check the thrust reduction and acceleration, which by default, my company is using 1000 above the ground, so I'm going to enter 1000 above the ground on both of those over here. Then we've got our transition altitude, which is 14000 as per 
the departure chart, if you remember that one. So let's bring out the Navigraph app once more. And on the departure chart, we can see the transition altitude is 14,000 feet up here, which is entered down here on the panel as well. Now, the engine out acceleration altitude is 1500 above the ground. And from here, we can move on to the climb page. We can use any pre-selected speed as needed. And that concludes our FMS setup. Now, what I'm going to do is I will leave the takeoff page open on the pilot flying side. And then I'm going to select the LAX page, so that's active flight plan, over here on the pilot monitoring side. When those setups are done, we can move up to the auto flight system control panel one more time and make sure that we've done all our selections as needed. So for example, the Q&H has changed since we did our previous en entries. So we've got 1021 over here right now. The initial climb altitude is set and we have managed the rest. Last but not least, we go over to the primary flight display and over here we ensure that flight director 1 and 2 are active. The takeoff speeds are showing and climb as well as nav are showing in blue and that completes our fms setup thank you very much for watching i do hope that you learned something today be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below the video as always be sure to like comment and subscribe and if you really love what i'm doing on this channel i would appreciate a small donation through the buy me a coffee link in the video description below thank you for watching and i see you all again on the next one.